<laughs> All right, we are at Pax Unplugged, and, and we're going to look at Moon Quake Escape is the proper pronunciation. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Jeff Johnston. I'm uh, here at the Breaking Games booth, who has published the game Moon Quake Escape, and I'd be more than happy to explain to you what's going on with this game. So, here we go. All right. You know, the easiest way to explain Moon Quake Escape is actually just take the whole game apart. So this game takes place on this desolate planet at the edge of the galaxy where the most evil criminals, that would be us players, have been sent. You know, but when the engineers selected this world, they didn't realize it had an unstable molten core. You know, and they also vastly underestimated the extreme gravitational stress of the moon that orbits around this planet. So when they decided to build this prison here, and then bury it, deep under the surface like you do most alien prisons these days. So I'm told it's quite a trend. They didn't realize that these factors would result in a massive moon quake which destroys the prison but allows us aliens to escape to the surface where amidst all of this chaos, we realize at the same moment there's only one rocket left. And the first one of us who get there will escape and for the rest of us, our death sentence. So that's the exciting setting for Moonquake Escape. How do you play the game? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Every player is going to have an alien on the board and an alien card. And if you can simply keep your alien card face down and hidden, you're going to be able to move closer to the rocket, launch the rocket, and win the game. Now, the other player is going to be trying to turn your alien face up, so one of the first tasks as a player you're going to be doing is simply finding a few more cards. At least make it a little harder to find your game, right? So, at its heart, the game Moonquake Escape is the movie's Alien Escape from Alcatraz, meets a little three-card Monty, meets the spin cycle of your washing machine, and that's the game we're about to play. All right? Now, Two quick things about these cards that we have, right? Each of us are going to have a set of cards fighting our alien, right? And you're going to be turning over these trying to find mine. Now, most of the cards you turn over are going to say, hey, you missed me, right? But you might find a card that has a bad effect on me, or maybe one that has a rebounding effect on you. So not always so straightforward to find those aliens. Also, many of the cards that you find are going to be useful equipment. The energy shield is pretty useful because what I can do with that is protect a card. Now, normally it'll take you one action to see if that's my alien. It's going to take two actions to figure out what that card is, and so now we get to play a little bluffing game. Is that my alien? Or a from a trap Now, a game turn is very straightforward. A game turn will always begin with the moonquake phase, where the board is going to change its shape. So the first thing that happens is the moon will orbit to a player who will spin the moon. And what is the result? Three. Three. So, every player will add three charges to their action card, or their status card. So each player is going to be able to manage three actions this turn. We'll also roll the quake die once per level to see how this massive moon quake is changing the shape of the board just before we get ready to move. Now, in the escape phase, we're simply going to evaluate. Is your alien face down and hidden? If it is, we'll move forward to the next level. As you move forward, each space you're going to see has a terrain type which limits your actions. But each space also has a bonus action that you get for free when you enter it. So, you're going to have to weigh those against each other based on what's going on in your hand and the rest of the game to make the sense what makes the most sense of it. Now, if your alien was face up, you don't get to move forward, but you get more cards. More cards, better hiding, and a key tiebreaker at the end of the game. Now, next is the action phase. Every player will get a chance to use those charges. They'll make more equipment ready. They'll add more cards to their hands. Maybe I'll move to another space and steal equipment from you. Maybe you'll zap me to find my alien and stop me in my tracks. Finally is the guard phase. Yes, there is a robotic guard roaming the surface looking for escaped aliens. We probably all want to avoid it. If you can evade all of those dangers and get to the launch pad, you can launch the rocket, a moon quake, a Now everybody that stops to learn about moon quake escape, and these might just be virtual to you in the audience, it's a delicious moon pie dessert treat. Would you like one? Yes. Would you like one? I'm good, thank you. Because I'm not actually going to give you the moon pie, you are going to have to earn it. So here's the scenario. You have three charges. I am on the launch pad, about to leave the planet with that delicious moon pie, unless you can find my alien right there. So what you're going to do is take the zap action, costing you one charge. And you're going to look at one of these three cards to see if it's my alien, or you're going to use the get rid of the shield, so you can use another zap action to see if that's it. So, for that delicious moon pie, where's my alien? You have found my 
right. All right. <laughs> What other fun concepts about the game might we have learned had you not picked that alien first? Let's see. Ooh, had you picked this one, the prison guard would move unexpectedly. Now, in this particular situation, the guard joins me on the launch pad. Now, if I don't have a backup plan to deal with the guard, the guard might have helped you stop you, give you a chance to catch up. What was over here? Ooh, lucky shot. A yellow card, bad on me. I unexpectedly lose a charge. I wind up with no charges. Now, I need a charge to launch the rocket. Again, if I didn't have a backup plan, say, like a piece of equipment to launch the rocket, that could have foiled me right there. What was this? A purple card? Ooh, aftershock. Every, pe every player on the board would have to take a piece of equipment that was ready and make it not ready. Maybe the shield would have come off a card without doing it. So, in this scenario, you can see, I understand what the dangers are in my hand. I don't know what you're going to pick. So depending on my situation, that might influence where I put my uh, shields, right? Now, I might have had more green cards in my hand, which actually have a rebounding effect on you. If you had picked this, I would have been able to turn over one of your cards, maybe find a your right? Now, I don't ever play this card on you. You pick it and play it on yourself. Now, maybe I have a little extra fun by setting it up as a trap for you. And then how the game ends is multiple players are on the launch pad. And when more than one player can launch, the player with the most face-down cards launches to win the game. That means I'm going to be turning over your cards, and you're going to be turning over my cards. And as a result, all these unexpected circumstances are going to be happening. And whichever one of us has the best plan B is going to escape, because your plan A will never survive for this one. But you did find my alien, earning you delicious moon pie. I do like to take a picture of the moon pie winner, so we'll do a double picture landing here. All right, excellent. Now this mugshot will go on your permanent record, but you and your audience can find it on the Moonquake Escape Facebook page. Find it right there.